everybody, I'm Gummy D, and welcome back to Song of Sal- Wait a minute. Okay, good. For a second there, I thought the microphone was off, and I was like, shit! Anyway, welcome back to Song of Saya. I got a little smuts on my glasses. I thought I cleaned it all off before I started, but I didn't. I fucked up. Oops. Alright, so we're gonna load right back from where we were last time. Which is, uh, it looks like someone sprayed the walls with pig guts. Yep, that's what we're going to do, apparently. Yep. Okay. It looks like someone sprayed the walls with pig guts from the ceiling to floor. What color should the walls of the hospital be? White, of course. And to the creatures of rotten flesh shambling around me, I'm sure the hallways look just as white as they should. I know, intellectually, that the walls are white, and that the flesh beasts are really human. I'm the one with the problem, and it's because I've accepted that, accepted this, that I'm able to lead something approaching a normal life. Even in the university medical department is nowhere near as good as the, wait, oh, as T universities, I'm still a medical student specializing in neurology. I have a basic idea of what is happening to me, though it's hard to believe. This isn't a pathological condition. It's probably some form of, oh god, uh, agnosia, 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 ambrosia, unlike the, anything that has ever been studied before. The flesh beast called, the flesh beast called Tanbo Ryoku, said that other patients had developed neurological disorders after receiving the same treatment I did. So, I guess I'm just another fa failure. It makes me want to laugh that laugh in that know-it-all doctor's face that said I don't blame the doctors who operated on me after all I do owe them my life I know as well as any one how low the chance of success was and that I had no hope of survival no other hope of oh my god what the fuck is that thing Ooh, they're gross I was unlucky that's all there is the point is that my condition isn't treatable. Are you sure? Just like someone adapting to a hearing aid or a wheelchair, I have no choice but to adapt to the nauseating scenery. Of course, it's hard. It wasn't easy to resign myself to this fate. But now, there's more than just despair. Even for me, there's a glimmer of hope. Oh. Keeping my eyes on my feet so to, as to see as little of the horrifying world as possible, I hurry home. Who are we hurrying home? Why are we hurrying home? Ugh, it's gross. I live in a quiet, quiet suburban neighborhood, in a house that's much too large for me alone. My parents, even unluckier than I was, died in the accident three months ago. I remember this from last time. Kinda. I couldn't even go to the funeral for being in intensive care. That sucks. I had to sell my father's business, but at least that left me with the house and enough money to live for a while. Ooh, it's gross, so fleshy. <clears throat> like, just like that. Of course I'm sad. But the accident took me from... Took me... From, mm, the accident took from me more than my parents. In fact, being on my own has probably saved me. If they were still alive, my parents would never have allowed me to live with some strange girl after all. Oh, okay, good. Ooh, it's so gross in here. Hello. As I open the door, a bright voice greets me from the kitchen. The voice is beautiful, clear as a bell, human. Its sweet sound washes the day of cacophony from my memory. Uh, oh, it's the name of the game. Okay. So this is our character. I can't. I will see. It, it's probably actually the character that's just down over there. Over there. I'm assuming that's Saya. Uh, even the patter of feet coming down the hallway is music to my ears. Nowhere else in the city can I hear such footsteps. Only in this house, with Saya, I am so privileged. Look at this! Well, oh, I had to go to the doctor first. Yeah, that's what I said. Come on. Yes. In her smile, in the Inquisition till... Inquis inquisitive tilt of her head is everything that I have lost. 
Since my accident, this girl is the only person I've met, perhaps the only person in the entire world that who does not trigger my cognitive disorder. True, her skin seems too white, well that's racist, and the color of her eyes and hair is probably different in reality, but even so, her form is undeniably human. Well what if it's the opposite, huh? What if all the humans you see are big flesh beasts, but all the flesh beasts you see look like humans? Did you think of that? If that's the plot twist, uh, I called it now, right here. And it's not just her appearance and her voice, but also her... As I bend down to take my shoes off, Saya wraps her arms around my neck and pulls me gently... Oh. Her sk Oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh oh. Her skin feels truly human, not cold or slimy. From her hair wafts the sweet fragrance of a young girl. Dude. In all the world, only Saya is pleasing to my five senses. And what's more, she smiles at me, embraces me. She knows that she is my salvation, and for some reason is happy that I need her. If I had not met Saya, if I had been all alone in this twisted, filth-ridden world, I would have no doubts of come... I would have no doubt succumbed to madness. It is no exaggeration to say that Saya alone is keeping me alive. After I see the humming Saya take off to the kitchen, I step into the living room. Oh, what the fuck? I realized one day that the natural colors of the world were sickening. All I had to do was paint over them with colors that I deemed pleasant. Okay. I went to the hardware store and bought every color of paint I could find, then Saya and I tried different combinations until we found one that worked. After painting the bedroom from the ceiling to floor, I was finally able to get my first good night's sleep since the incident. When we first started on the living room, Saya assured me, ensured me what to do with the curtains. Just painting carefully around the windows without a moment's hesitation, I tore the curtains down and painted over the glass itself. There'll never be anything out there that I want to see as long as we kept keep the storm shutters closed. The neighbors probably won't think anything of it. Woo, dinner! She enters the living room with a tray of uh, food. Saya sniffs the air. Now that she mentions it, I suppose the smell of paint thinner must be building up in the clo in this closed room. Doesn't really bother me though. There are far worse smells out there, so I'm just getting high, getting a paint high. Does it bother you? All right, thank you. So I sit the food on the table. Unfortunately, neither of its color nor its smell is at all appetizing. Not that food elsewhere is any different. As become as has become routine, I steal myself and methodically transport the food to my mouth. The taste is gut-wrenching as I expect, but it's not Saya's fault. I'm sure she made it exactly like the cooking show said, it's just that my taste buds can't accept it. She hesitates. She asks hesitantly. Lying won't make Saya happy. She knows about my condition. That's good. That's a good way to look at it. In my current state, eating is nothing more than an unwelcome duty. As much as I hate it, I need the food to survive. If I stay alive, then perhaps one day, as Saya says, I'll be able to taste something delicious again. I met Saya, didn't I? Okay. And all the time we've been together, Saya has never once eaten with me. I don't know why she refuses to, it makes me a little sad. She's a flesh beast! <coughs> She's a flesh beast! That's what she is. Still, I'm not uh, about to push the issue. Not when she's putting up with all the problems I have. Dude, you have a lot of problems. Yes, about Dr. Ogai Masahiko. Uh, Saya's daughter. Father. Daughter-father. Man, father, bro, is her only relative. 
Saya has asked me to unravel the mystery of his disappearance. They obviously are. Yes. I expected Saya to be a little bit more dejected. It's not that. Oh? She gives a little shake of her head, then smiles at me once again. Sure. I thank her for the meal and set my chopsticks down next to the perfectly clean plate. As as wretched as the as wretched as the taste was, thinking of the care that Saya put into it gave me the strength to finish every bite. Um. Mm. Please don't. Mm. Ever since Saya moved in, it's been more like having my own wife. Saya, why are you so good to me? Okay, hello. All right, so the next scene is a little bit uh, adult. So I'm going to explain what happens here. So basically, we got Fuminori. He's this dude here. We're going to draw him. He's like, mm. He looks good, right? Mm, looks so good. So we got Fuminori here. He's going to give him some better eyes. Okay, well, that's okay. And he's just like, oh, like that. And then we have Saya, who I think he's kind of like this. And she's got the long hair. And it's just like that. And then it's, it's like that. And it's like that. And uh, and uh, they don't have no clothes on. They're completely naked. They're on They're on a bed. They're on a bed like this. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bed. So they're on a bed like that. So you just poop and his legs... Like that, and it's like that, and it was like that, and then it just, she's she's on top of him, and they're just like boom, 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 and it's bangs, and it's all over the place, and that goes on for like <laughs> fucking five, ten minutes, and it's um I I can't I just can't I can't show it. It's too much to censor, especially the text. I don't. It's uh. So uh, yeah. Um, also, there's like no story comprehension. Nothing really happens. I'm just gonna doodle still. Nothing progresses the story very much. It's just sex. It's a little graphics. A little something I did not want to see. I want the spooks. I don't. I don't. I don't want. I don't want the. I don't take eraser. That's a shitty eraser. That's a shitty eraser. So yeah. So you didn't miss much. Sayed, who's right there still, you can't really see her. Sayed, this is her face right there. Yeah, that's good. That's her. She says that she wants she wants Fuminori to stay with her forever. So yeah, that's 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 what happens right here in this scene. We're gonna transition now. We're done with that scene. We're back. We're at school now. So, yeah. I'm back. I'm just, yeah. I'm going to cut out the last scene. I'll give you the gist of what happened, but trust me. Stuff got weird. You can't put that shit on YouTube. Don't worry. Like I said, there'll be a part that explains what happened. Don't worry. Anyway, we're going to continue from here. I guess, uh, yeah. Yo is determined to talk to him today. Nothing will happen as long as she hesitates. It will only prolong her suffering. The time has come to show her courage once again. Mm. Yo's fourth period on Thursday is biology. This is her one chance to see Fuminori. As requested, or as required course with many students, the lecture is held in a large hall that can seat well over 200. But since the room is usually only half full, it is rarely difficult for Yo to find seats she wants. Yo prefers to sit near the center where it's easiest to hear the professor. Most of the students can uh, congregate in the area for the same reason. Fumora usually sits beside her, although given the, amb 
ambiguous state of their relationship, she knows better than to take it this for granted. Still, she tries to save a seat whenever possible. The classroom is crowded today, so Yo is able to set her bag on the seat next to her without uh, inconveniencing anyone. But when the professor arrives, as the usual time for the class, there is no sign of Fuminori. After waiting for about 10 minutes, Yo scans the room, uh, for, 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 furtively? For, furtively. I don't know the fuck. Fumino, I, I can't get out what just happened, and I, there's a skip button you can press, and it doesn't skip fast enough. You just see and hear and stuff, and again, I'm here for the spooks, not for the other stuff. The, this. It was, the, it was weird. I don't. I'm. Did he miss Yo when he came in? No, he couldn't have. And besides, no serious student would willingly sit far away from the front. Feeling miserable, Yo slides her bag back over to her. Oh, this sad. Fuminori is out the door the moment class ends. Yo barely manages to catch up to him before he disappears down the hallway. Fuminori jerks. Uh, uh, uh. Fuminori jerks at the sound of his name. You would think she just screamed at him. Nanika. He turns to her and asks reluctantly. Now that they are face to face, Yo is painfully aware of how much weight Fuminori has lost. His sunken eyes, protruding cheekbones are a far cry from the features familiar to her. She wonders whether he's under a lot of stress or perhaps not getting enough nutrition. Maybe it's bro. He definitely looks more tense than usual, afraid, even though, uh, even though of what she can imagine, his eyes move re restlessly from point to point, he refuses to look Yo in the eyes. It hurts to see Fuminori this way. What could have changed him so? Today, she reminds herself, rekindling the flame of courage in her heart. <laughs> Yes, I do. The courtyard is empty and silent, and no one is willing to sit and chat in the cold November air. Don't you remember? Yo almost blurts the question, but manages to keep her composure. Mm-hmm. Yep. He smiles like it's nothing, but even that seems stiff and forced. He's even standing precisely one pace farther away from her than he used to. Well, she wants you to accept her confession of love, you dink! Instead of fucking... fucking Saya. I don't... Yo manages to keep the flinching at the harshness of his tone. Struggling. He's struggling. Struggling to deal with the flesh peoples. Rather than answer, Fuminori grinds his toe into the dead grass at his feet. Fearing that he... that her determination might flag, Yo lets the words come out as they may. Yep. Yeah, that seems right. Fuminori mutters through clenched teeth, no longer trying to deny it or change the topic. This is an ever clearer signal of rejection than his prior eva evasiveness. But Yo's determination is strong. Today, at least, she won't back down. She implores, trying to convey the sincerity of her feelings for him. Yeah, that's gross. And? 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 There we go. Yo can no longer stop the words pouring from her lips. She fears that if she does not unleash the feelings pent up inside of her, they will be lost forever. 
私たちで何とかできることだってあるたとえ何もできないにしても The voice sounds weird. Oh, Fumunori shouts, silencing Yo's in in entreaty. She promised herself that she wouldn't back down, but Fumunori's expression is terrible enough to shatter her resolve. The look in his eyes is not anger or any other warm blooded emotion, it is hate, murderously cold hate. Oh my. No, you didn't. He remembers. He remembers, yet still he has treated her so coldly. That is all the answer she needs. If his words stab any deeper, she might very well die. Oh, oh dude, that's harsh. Fuminori, you're a dick. I don't like you anymore. Oh, he's gonna break her heart. Oh! You fucking dickhole! Don't cry, Yo tells herself, but it's too late to stop the tears pouring from her eyes. Oh. Dude. Dude. Yo whispers in shock and despair. Oh, dude, don't smile, you fucking. To which Fuminori twists his lips into a malevolent smile. That's all Yo can take. After shedding tears in front of him, she absolutely refuses to hear, to let him hear her cry. Any disgrace would be preferable to breaking down here. 